I left Iran in October 1982, and he was the first Iranian in exile that I met, right? And he said, oh, I'm going... I was coming back from India. You were, yeah, and you had that f famous fever. And yeah, yeah. You were bone fever. Bone fever. And he was going back. I said, come on, why do you want to go back? You know, it's, it's not a good time to go back. And he said, uh, no, I want to go back and I want to struggle against the regime. I want to... I, I thought I was going to die. Yeah, you know, and, and then it was the first night, so we sat and we talked for you know, a few hours. Then he was convinced, he said, no, okay, so I'm not going. But then he brought another personal reason. I have to go see my mother <laughs> and I'm going to come back. And my uh, girlfriend. <laughs> my girlfriend, you know, at the time. And I said, okay, while you're going, would you do me a favor? He said, so what is it? And I said, so if you could bring my girlfriend with you. He said, okay, no problem. Two days after we left Islamabad, you know, and we went to another city called Kuwait. He left in a couple of days. He went just like this. He left, and at the border of Iran and, and Pakistan, he, he managed to cross the border. And I was sitting in this city, Kuwait, for a month day and night waiting for him to come back and bring my girlfriend, you know? <laughs> but finally, one day, he came like a bird. And he was... With his girlfriend and the, uh, the sister-in-law. Sister <laughs> yeah. So, and what happened, the smuggler, they, they took him as hostage. But he managed to run away to escape. <laughs> anyway, so that's, that's the beginning of our exile together. So we started to know each other in two, three hours, he became a friend, and then he left. He brought my girlfriend, I was sitting in that city for a month. He came back. So this picture is the result of, you know... The destiny is mistake. Yeah, destiny was a mistake to be, to be with you for 23 <laughs> years. You know, you devilish, <laughs> devilito. So then he left. He left you know, from Karachi to, to Thailand. And he, he's supposed to go to the United States while we were in Canada. And I told him, do not stop at any case in the United States of America. So <laughs> he had three stops. He came here through the United yeah, States. Yeah, through the United States. So he had three stops in the United States. I said, don't even think about it, to go there, because they're going to they're gonna figure out your passport is fake. And he had a box full of Karl Marx books, you know, Lenin and this and that, and he goes oh, yeah, there. <laughs> you know, they open this box and they see that he has Karl Marx books, you know, Lenin and whatever, whatever, and they said, okay, let's deport this bastard communist. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and then in two days, he was deported to Thailand. They didn't even let me to see my lawyers. Yeah. So he, he was deported to Thailand, so he went back to the same place. They didn't give me food for three days. No, two days. And what happened? So he called me from the airport, and uh, and then we have to we have to rush. We have to, you know, find a way to bring him because they deported him to Thailand. Now he's in danger, and they might deport him or whatever. So, but we managed to to bring him in 48 hours. So that's the second mistake in my life. <laughs>